powered by the Montana Television Network. This is the 530 News on Q2, Montana's news leader. Good evening, everyone. Thanks for joining us this Friday. I'm Janelle Slade. Jay is off tonight. Topping the news, Governor Steve Bullock issues an executive order declaring a state of disaster. 4,000 firefighters, 125 aircraft, and 350 Montana National Guard members battling 40 wildfires across our state. Despite these strong efforts, those flames have scorched more than half a million acres. Well, today's declaration allows Governor Bullock to mobilize additional state resources and the Montana National Guard. Now, unfortunately, the hot and dry conditions are not expected to let up anytime soon. Fire experts now saying this fire season will last well into the fall. Q2's Samantha Harrelson has more on the fire outlook as we head into this holiday weekend. This is not going to be a normal Labor Day weekend. It is not going to be a normal fall. People need to get their situational awareness heightened for threats that are out there. With the drought conditions, with the lack of rainfall, we have some really serious fire conditions all across the Treasure State. Al Nash, public information officer with the Bureau of Land Management says, with many people hoping to spend the holiday weekend outdoors, it's even more important to be cautious. We don't want to scare people away from enjoying themselves this weekend or on into the fall, but they need to have a different mindset. These fires can grow at an extraordinary rate. If you're out there hiking, if you're out there hunting, you need to check the weather before you go out. If you start to see or smell a great deal of smoke, you need to get out of there. These fires are moving faster than you can. There are messages we've been hearing all summer, but Nash says it's just as important to be listening now. We're not done yet by any stretch of the imagination. We really need some significant precipitation and a real big change in the weather to start fire season on the decline. That's nowhere in sight. Nash says it's important to keep your eye on the weather forecast and have an evacuation plan just in case. Watching the coverage of what's happening in Texas and Louisiana should serve as a stark reminder to us that they have hurricanes and floods, we have fires. They can come upon you on very little notice and you need to be prepared. In Billings, Samantha Harrelson, MTN News. Thanks, Sammy. In other fire news tonight, so far, no official cause for the fires along Highway 87 last night, but the number and location of blazes could indicate how they started. Fire crews put out at least five fires along Highway 87 from mile marker 7, just outside the heights, past mile marker 21 toward Roundup. Two fires near mile markers 19 and 21 burnt about 1,800 acres together. The smaller fires burned about 300 acres combined. The Shepherd Fire Chief suspects a vehicle heading north on Highway 87 likely sparked those flames. Fire at 7 Mile, fire here, fire 21 Mile, and a couple further down the road started at the edge of the road and burned their way in. So it's some, some vehicle is what we are suspecting. Dragon chain or sometimes uh, tractor trailers, when the tires delaminate, the chunks of rubber will go off and the metal, metal cord in the rubber will actually start the grass on fire. Now, Yellowstone County DES Director Brad Shoemaker says all the fires have been put out and tonight fire crews are on patrol status. Well, we still have several fires burning here on the eastern side of the state. The Sartan Draw Fire, first reported Wednesday morning, has now burned more than 80,000 acres. The fire started in Powder River County on U.S. Forest Service land and is about 35 miles northwest of Broadus. The cause is unknown and the fire is 0% contained. About 50 miles southeast of Miles City, the Snake Fire continues to burn. Authorities say the fire remained contained overnight despite some winds. Fire crews are also watching over fires burning in Rosebud, Bighorn, and Carter County tonight. And on the western side of the state, the 37,000-acre Rice Ridge Fire, 18% contained, with nearly 1,100 evacuation orders and warnings still in place. Despite efforts, the Sprague Fire burning in Glacier National Park destroyed the historic Sperry Chalet last night. The fire doubled in size overnight, bringing it to 4,700 acres. And although some evacuation warnings around the Lolo Peak Fire are lifted, many residents in River Valley County remain under warnings. Firefighters are making progress on that nearly 40,000 acre fire. It is now 31% contained. Well, with hundreds of thousands of acres burnt and smoke blurring the horizon for weeks now, can something be done to lower the intensity of future wildfires? 
One answer is called fuel mitigation. MTN's Dennis Carlson tells us more. We live in the state of Montana. It's not a question of if we're going to get a fire. It's a question of when. A solid wall of trees is not a healthy plant community. Matt Daw is in the middle of a four to eight year fuel mitigation project on his 160 acre ranch north of York. This was the mess that, I mean, you can't see more than 25 yards in here. And this was the mess that was left over from when the beetle kill came through here over like the last seven years. And if a fire were to come through here, it would be all, it'd, it'd be gone. You couldn't, like Look I at said, all those little whips you've taken out. Right, you couldn't see any of this. Working in consultation with the Natural Resource Conservation Service, Da is removing dead and dying timber from his property and eliminating ladder fuels that can turn a grass fire into a crown fire. And it just it gives a, a more healthier plant community for the wildlife to be working through. When we take these ladder fuels, when we trim down from as high up as we can reach down to the ground and we get these junipers out, what's going to happen is the, the fire will come through here, it's going to burn the grass, it's going to burn the needle cast out of here, and it's going to continue past. It might scorch the bottom of the tree a little bit, but the odds of it going up that tree and getting into the upper fuels of that tree are very, very slim. Da says he can already see the difference on his ranch. That right there is good grass for elk to eat off of, cows to eat off of, horses. That right there, if a fire comes through here, it's just going to burn everything underneath and it's not going to get into the trees. And as a volunteer with the York Fire Department, Da feels good about his project. I feel very confident um, that if a fire were to come through here, we would minimize the damages to our property um, and, and we, we wouldn't sustain any structural loss or anything of that. Reporting from York, Dennis Carlson, MTN News. Thanks, Dennis. Now here in Billings, you can't walk outside without noticing that smoke. So let's take a live look at the Q2 iCam right now. The harmful air across the state causing many to change their Labor Day plans and instead stay inside. Now right now, this is what the air quality looks like across the state. In Billings, you can see air quality is listed as unhealthy for sensitive groups. That classification comes from the Montana Department of Environmental Quality and cautions anyone with respiratory or heart issues to limit time outdoors. On the western side of the state, much of the air remains in the moderate category, which is an upgrade. In Sealy Lake, you can see air quality is still unhealthy at this hour. Only Sydney on the far east side of the state has air quality that is good. Turning to weather, our region no different than the rest of the state. We need to be careful this weekend, Bob. Yeah, that smoke was really bad this morning, which got us wondering, well, where is it all coming from? It isn't from the west. Where did all the smoke in buildings come from today? So we made a graphic here. And as you can see, this is what our smoke plume looks like. It actually starts in central California, goes up into Oregon, Washington, Idaho, some more fires in western Montana, but also in eastern Montana. We've got some fires going there, and it's coming from all over the place. So you think, all right, all we need is some cool, fresh air from Canada. I don't think so, Tim. Look at this. We got smoke all the way up there into parts of all the way up to the, uh, uh, basically into Ontario and places like that in Manitoba. So here's what we have tonight for us. We have a couple of red flag warnings, one for the front range of the Rockies and one also for the southeast corner of the state. And then on Sunday, some cold air does drop down from Canada, but it does bring us a fire weather watch for a lot of erratic fire behavior across much of the state as we head into Sunday and Monday. But it will bring some cooler temps. We'll check mo talk more about that in a few more minutes. All right. Thanks, Bob. A mural of Joseph Medicine and Crow now watches over Lodge Grass as a way for the community to heal after the murders of three people last month. Ben Pease, a successful Native American artist in Belgrade, recently painted the portrait of Medicine Crow on the side of the IGA supermarket there. Lodge Grass is the birthplace of the beloved war chief who died in Billings last year. The community and tribal law enforcement participate in the painting by placing handprints around the word resilient. Law enforcement suspects drugs were involved in that triple shooting. Now, the FBI told Q2 today nearly one month after those murders, no arrests have been made, but investigators are actively following leads. Up next on tonight's 530 News, a new host of legislation could make it easier for Montanans with a criminal past to move forward. And later in sports, Scott's already underway with a jam-packed weekend from cross-country to football. Top finishers at today's meet coming up. You're watching MTN News with Jay Cohn and Janelle Slade. Storm Tracker Weather with Bob McGuire and Sports with Scott Breen.